whenever I mention my master thesis doing live streams or in videos, there are always people asking if I wouldn't do a video about it. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to talk about solar flares. <laughs> Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to well, this. This is my master thesis that I wrote about five years ago now. This is on the topic of predicting solar flares. But before we dive into it, I just want to talk about why you even want to bother trying to predict a solar flare. As a good example, that's back from March 1989, so quite a bit of time back. But back then, and the Earth was hit by quite a severe magnetic storm. Canada took the, the blunt of the blow, tripping a circuit breaker at one of the power plants close to Quebec, causing a nine-hour blackout. So I was working with predicting these flare event. And this is something that's been going on for years, so it wasn't really expected that I would find the smoking gun, but it was kind of a piece in a larger puzzle. So what this was, I took a picture like this. This is a picture of, of the sun. Actually, this is a normal component of the magnetic field, meaning this is the strength of the magnetic field on the surface of the sun pointing away from the surface. So not horizontally, only vertically. And I took these pictures like an hour or two before known flare events. We're not really able to do these kind of predictions in real time. So I just found a nice big flare event and went back, took the magnetic field structures a few hours before. And the idea was that I would then reconstruct the magnetic field structures above that active region and then try to do a time evolution, simulate the um, evolution of this and see if that simulation matches what we saw in reality. So obviously we saw that flare, we have data on that flare, how it reacted. And I was then going to try to do the time evolution and see if we could try and re-simulate that solar flare. But the bulk of my work was to try and reconstruct these magnetic fields. Just to get you up to speed, before I started my master thesis, what my supervisor had mostly done was when they were reconstructing the fields, they were using a purely potential magnetic field. You're most likely familiar with these kinds of fields from, if you take a simple bar magnet, that's a potential magnetic field. You have up north, you have a south pole, and, and the magnetic field flows between them. However, you can make other constructions of magnetic fields that are still force-free, that are still stable. And that is what I was trying to do. I was trying to see if we could add some, some shear, some twists and some turns into the magnetic fields, still keeping it force-free, still keeping it stable, but kind of pre-store some energy by twisting the magnetic field a little bit. So I wrote a piece of software that could initially compute these magnetic fields with different values of shearing and storing up uh, twisting energy into the field. And then I took that and looked at how the magnetic field looked and I s compared it to actual pictures at the time and I saw how my field lines matched up with those pictures. And once I found, find something that looked right, then that was what I was going for with the full simulation. And then we were looking for precursors in the magnetic field. We have a pretty good idea about what kind of magnetic structures we're looking for. You're looking for kind of like a like a weird fork kind of structure, like the one you can see here. So basically you have like a north and a south pole with, a, with the main magnetic field forming what's called the spine. And then you have a smaller magnetic field around one of the poles of the larger magnetic field. And this caused this weird fork kind of structure in the magnetic field. And at that intersection point between the two, in that X point, that's where the magic happened. This is where you get an effect called magnetic reconnection. And this is what is causing the solar flare. You've, you've probably seen simulations of like fluid dynamics where you see people have done simulations of li liquids um, or air, how it moves, and they're quite advanced. Now imagine doing that if the liquid is magnetic and there's a strong complex magnetic field. That is what we're trying to do here. And there is kind of a what's called flux freezing effect. That means that the magnetic field, because the fluid itself or the gas in this situation is all plasma technically, but the material itself is magnetic. That means that if you move the magnetic field, you pull some of that material with you and the other way around. If the, if the material is moved, it will have a tendency to try and drive the magnetic field with it as well. So when you have this flow up from the surface of the sun, it pushes the material into this X region pulling the magnetic field with it. And as this gets tighter and tighter squeezed together, you can have situations where the magnetic field will snap, reconnecting with the other one, causing a quite rapid acceleration of the magnetic field and the plasma outwards. And that's what causing a solar flare. 
So I was looking for these weird X structures, and here's a picture from one of the magnetic fields that I reconstructed. And as you can see, we do indeed have something that, that simulates this right above the active region where we expected the flare, the flare to happen. Pretty good indications here early on. So there was already an existing program that would be running on like a multi-cluster big server somewhere that could do the time evolution. I was running it through that, and then I was beginning to look into the actual results, see how this thing evolved and if it kind of matched, if we could get it stable. I had a lot of issues with instabilities. For instance, when you take these pictures, it's not just like click, take a picture of the sun with an advanced magnetic field camera and then off to the races with you. When you're taking these pictures, these were taken from a satellite in, in, in orbit. We were having, I was having a lot of issues because I was so sensitive to minor changes in the magnetic field with this that sometimes it would just simply have like a cosmic ray, like some rogue high energy ray that's been traveling for millions of years just come flying and go and hit the CCD just at the time that they took the picture. And that of course meant we get these weird white streaks across the image and that would completely ruin the simulation because then it would suddenly see like this immense, massive, massive, massive magnetic field or thought it would, meaning that the forces in that particular area would be enormous or would evolve very quickly. And that means when I was doing this nice simulation, it was trying to to build this up. This one little like annoying like cosmic ray would then suddenly just be like a explosion, just sending out a shockwave through the whole region, completely wrecking the magnetic field that I just reconstructed. So to do that, that was one of the small side projects. Was I have to write a piece of code that could detect these cosmic rays in the picture and try to well remove them basically, and and we'll have to try and make some some qualified guesses on how the field should look in the, in that area where the uh, the cosmic ray was. Here's an example of what it looked before and, and after I ran that uh, software on a, on a specific cosmic ray. And as you can see, I think it managed to uh, to reduce it uh, quite significantly and look, looked a lot better. Now, obviously trying to show a 3D vector field on a 2D surface is, is not very easy. So what I've done here is I've taken a slice down the middle through that region and shown how the magnetic field look. And if we begin here at the beginning, here you can see initially how we have these structures here. We actually have multiple of them in different layers kind of nested on top of each other. And let's just try to run this little uh, simulation here and let's see how it evolves. That was quite beautiful. And as you can see, we did get something that kind of simulated a, a solar flare. Um, there were some instabilities still, but I managed to iron out most of them. Obviously, this topic is, is a lot more complicated than, than what I'm showing here. I've tried to keep this video completely clean of any equations or ad advanced fluid dynamic stuff because, stuff, because this is a YouTube video after all. I hope you enjoyed this little science video. Thanks a lot for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give a like, subscribe to the channel, and until next time, I'll see you guys in space.